All right, boys and girls, if you reach this video, hear the sound of my voice, and can see the classroom policies and procedures on your screen, you have successfully figured out how to get registered on Edmodo and how to access a video from the home screen. This is very similar to how you are going to be uh, opening up the videos so that you can take notes for the following uh, class. Uh, very quickly, for those of you that may have missed it, I'm going to run through the class policies and procedures. Um, I have my basic information there, room number, email address, uh, students and parents alike. If you need to get in contact, me, email, uh, in contact with me, email is a very good way to do that. I typically have my email up and running uh, pretty much the majority of the day. I may not be able to respond the moment that you send the email, but I will know about it pretty much the moment you send it. And when I have an opportunity, I will respond to it. Uh, basically, I'm pretty uh, going to my, my class policies and procedures in a lot of detail uh, because I, I believe in having clear expectations. I want everybody to know exactly what to expect from me because I want to know exactly what to expect from you as well. And one thing that you'll find about me is I will have consistent enforcement. The rules are the rules and the rules apply to everybody. There is no favoritism or any such thing. That's my CE squared. Clear expectations and consistent enforcement. Basic class rules, you've heard these things a million times before. Um, Respect yourself and those around you. Be prepared for class mentally and physically. Uh, one of the things that we have a problem with in high school is we do not prepare ourselves for class physically. We have a lot of other things going on in life. Maybe we have to take care of brothers and sisters. Maybe we have a job that keeps us up late into the night. Or perhaps we just don't have sense enough to not be on our phone Facebooking until 1.30 in the morning. Whatever the case may be, uh, you got to realize that when you lose sleep, that puts your immune system at risk. And when your immune system starts to wear down, that's when you get sick. And it's a little bit difficult for your brain to function when your body is sick. So you got to take care of your body, get good sleep, feed it right, stuff like that. That's what I mean when I say be prepared for class physically. Use appropriate and respectful language at all times. This is a big issue. Um, I do not appreciate poor language in my classroom, and it brings about the question, what exactly is appropriate or respectful language? Well, basically, we're going to treat this classroom like an office space. You would not expect to walk into a professional office and hear people cursing every third word or anything like that. There is no sentence in the English language that cannot be said without him sticking a curse word or a replacement curse word into the sentence. So we're going to learn to speak on a professional level. And if we can do that, we'll have no problem. Uh, be in the classroom before the bell concludes reading, uh, ringing. Guys, I would very much like you to be in the classroom, in your desk, with your stuff out and ready to begin. We have enough to do, uh, 47 minutes per class period for 180 days this year, without having to spend the first five minutes of class with people trying to figure out where their homework is, trying to locate a pencil, trying to borrow a pencil, then going to get their pencil sharpened, all that kind of stuff. I would very much like for it to happen. The bell rings we begin class. We don't have to spend that first five minutes while people fumble around trying to figure things out. Um, all work being turned in will be done in pencil. Folks, this is a math class. This is nothing new. Okay, uh, You are going to make mistakes. And the problem with writing in pen is pens do not erase very well. And I hate seeing pages full of scratch outs. So you're going to get a pencil. You're going to do your work in pencil because you're going to make mistakes. And then you're going to erase your mistakes and try again. If you turn in your work in pen, I may very well hand it right back to you and make you recopy it. And then I'm going to count it late because you didn't have it ready to turn in uh, the way it was supposed to be done when it was due. Uh, work bring on that line, uh, work is due when it's requested by the instructor. After that point, it's late. I'm going to tell you exactly when things are going to be turned in, and then I'm going to pick them up. If you don't have them at that moment, if it takes you five minutes more or five hours more or takes until the next day, it doesn't matter. Late is late. Okay, we'll talk about late work here in a little bit. Uh, cheating or copying of work or answers will result in all involved students receiving a grade of zero. Folks, I look at cheating just like this. There are two people, at least two people, that are cheating. One that is doing it and one that is allowing it. It is cheating no matter what. Okay, so if you are loaning your homework paper to other people and I am able to piece it together that somebody else's homework is pretty much matching up to yours identically, I'm going to take those two pages, I'm going to drop them in the trash. Both pages will receive a zero without the possibility of a makeup. 
Check the assignment board and Edmodo for daily instructions, activities, and assignment. The instruction board is up here on the left side of the screen. You'll be able to see what's been going on here the, the this week, probably the next week. We'll be on the assignment board at all times. And we'll talk about what Edmodo is here more in a minute. Okay. Now, required materials. Okay, shouldn't be anything really new to you here. Uh, students should bring the following items with them every day. A binder containing previous and current assignments. Okay, that's a three ring binder, folks. We're going to have a lot of papers. Uh, you're going to have a lot of notes. You're going to be turning things into me. I'm going to be turning things back to you. You're going to need to be able to hang on to your papers. Okay, so a three ring binder so pages can be taken out and put back in without having to be ripped or torn in order to get in or out of anything. Uh, notebook paper, preferably loose leaf in your three ring binder. Okay, loose leaf paper. Um, anyway, you, those of you that like spirals and things like that, that's fine. The problem is if you if it, it doesn't have the little perforations, you tear it off. Now you got the little nasty thingies hanging off the left side of the paper, or maybe it doesn't have the hole punches in it. You don't have a, play, a way to put it in your binder. Okay, whatever. Loose leaf paper is is going to be best for this class. Okay. Uh, pencil, absolutely. Like I said, work's going to be done in pencil. Uh, the best thing for you to do would be to get you a mechanical pencil. You can get a couple of decent mechanical pencils, for uh, two for a buck, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to be taking a lot of notes. You're going to be doing a lot of writing. You're going to be working a lot of problems. Mechanical pencils, they just write cleaner. They stay sharper because of the, the narrow diameter of the lead. If you have one of those regular uh, wood or graphite type pencils that you have to go sharpen, you're probably going to need to be sharpening your pencil every 10 minutes, and that just gets to be a pain, also gets to be a distraction in class. So get yourself a mechanical pencil and an eraser. Get yourself a decent eraser, one of those block erasers, those little pink ones that, look, that are like parallelogram shaped, or uh, they have a big block gray or gold ones that erase really well. That little thing that comes attached to the end of your pencil that they sell in the store, that is not a good eraser. I'm not even sure what that thing is. All it ever does is take your little mistake and turn it into a big mistake. All right, grading. Okay. Assignments are generally graded and returned to you the next class day. As far as I'm concerned, that's, that's fair. Okay. Most of the time I'm going to give you an assignment, and I'm probably not going to give you more than one day in order to get it done. So if I'm only giving you one day, I feel it's reasonable for you to expect from me that I'm going to get it back to you in one day so that you can see what you did right or what you did wrong. If it takes me too long to get stuff back to you, the mistakes that you may have made on that homework are probably going to continue to give you trouble on the next homework as well. So I need you to be aware of what goes wrong. Okay. Um, keep your homeworks in your binder. In case there is any dispute of grades, check the grade sheets in the classroom frequently. Folks, if you think I'm going to go through the entire year and grade everybody's paper and type everybody's grades in the computer and never make a typographical error entering grades or never accidentally give your grade to somebody else in the grade book, uh, you're out of your mind. I am going to make mistakes, and the only way that you will be able to correct me on the mistakes is if you can produce the piece of paper that has that grade on it. So if you're in the habit of chucking your homework papers in the trash can, and then you come back and go, whoa, Mr. Hill, you gave me an 8 on that assignment, and it should have been an 80. I'm going to say, okay, let me see the paper, and you go, well, I threw it away. Well, I'm sorry, that 8 is going to stand because you can't show me the, the, that I made a mistake on the grade. I can't possibly remember everybody's grades on every single assignment, so you're going to need to be able to prove it to me. The way your grades are going to be broke down are like this. Tests and projects that we may have are going to account for half of your six weeks grade. Homework uh, will account for about a quarter, 25% of your six weeks grade. And things that we do in class, daily work, uh, class work, uh, little quizzes that we take, daily checks I call them, those are going to account for 25% of your grade as well. I will post your averages in the classroom weekly, and of course your grades are available 24 hours, 7 days a week on the parent portal. Okay, there is absolutely no excuse for you not knowing how you are doing in all of your classes. It is at your fingertips on any smartphone, any computer. All you got to do is get signed up on the parent portal. Each six weeks grading period in a semester is worth one fourth of the semester grade. The semester exam is worth the remaining one fourth of your semester grade. So uh, in 
put it in simple terms. First six weeks is worth 25%, second six weeks 25%, third six weeks 25%, the semester exam 25%. They all count the same. So you absolutely do not ever want to blow off a semester test. It is a, a bigger grade than anything that you have ever endured. Semester exam, as I said, is worth the remaining one-fourth of the semester grade. Even if your final exam exemptions apply, I don't know what the exemptions are going to be as yet. I don't know if you can exempt a math class yet, okay? But in any case, everybody is entitled to take the test. So if you just want to give it a shot and see if you can't get a better grade, if, it's, if you get a grade on there that will increase your average, it'll count. If you're, if you're exempt and you try the test anyway and you get a grade that would actually lower your average, I won't count it. So you can't hurt yourself by taking the semester test. There's really no reason to do that, to try to not take the test other than just laziness. At the end of the six weeks, students can qualify for a grade curve based upon the number of zeros they have for the six weeks. If you manage to go through an entire six weeks and you have no zeros for the six weeks, I'm going to give you two bonus points on your average. Okay. I also realize, you know, sometimes we goof up, we mess up, we thought we turned something in when we didn't, or we were absent, never made up an assignment, just flat forgot about it, whatever the case may be. So everybody, you know, from time to time is going to pick up a zero. If you end up with one zero, I'm still going to give you a one point curve on the six weeks. But if you're racking up more than, uh, you know, more than a, you know, a, a zero in a six weeks, that's a habit. Okay, you are you are basically putting yourself in a position that you you don't really care about your grade. You're basically saying, hey, you know, I, I don't really I don't really care about my average. It's okay with me if my average falls, and if it's okay with you that your average falls, then I see no reason to give you any bonus points. So if you have more than one zero in a six weeks, your average is your average. You're not going to get any extra points on that. Uh, redos. Okay, this is something that has uh, you know shown up here in the state the last uh, three or four years. Uh, all students are uh, entitled to do redos of some kind, okay, but it, it's up to the teacher to decide how to implement that. So here's the way it's going to work in my classes. In most instances, if a student is displeased with, pleased with a grade that is received in here, the student may redo the assignment. Sorry, waiting for the bell to quit ringing there. Uh, redos must be completed within five days of the student receiving the initial grade, and the redo work must be complete. If you have extra time to do, a, uh, do some work, to try it again, I'm not going to accept it halfway done or incompletely done. Okay, If you have extra time, the least you can do is get it finished. Uh, so no assi incomplete assignments will be accepted for redo consideration. Additionally, redos can only help your grade. A grade will never be lowered following a redo attempt. So if you want to try a homework again or try a quiz again or try a test again, okay, uh, I'm not going to lower your grade for giving that extra effort. You can only help yourself. So once again, the only, the only explanation for not doing redos is laziness. Uh, on homework or daily work, a redo grade can replace your existing grade. So let's say you do your homework, I grade it, I give it back to you. From the moment it comes back to you, you have five days in order to correct it. So on a homework, you'll get a, di a different sheet of paper. You'll work out your new problems and you work out those problems again and get your new answers. You'll take your old sheet and your new sheet and staple them together and turn them back in. You can get your entire credit back for doing that redo. Okay, so uh, let's say you have a 10 on a homework assignment, then uh, you do the redo, and you can get all 90 of the points that you missed back. Uh, a lot of teachers won't do that. They'll only let you increase a grade up to 70. Uh, I'm more interested in you getting all of the answers right than I am holding you to a, a very low borderline DF. Okay, and that applies for everybody. I mean, if you get a 99 on a homework assignment, uh, if you want to go through there and figure out what happened to that extra point, all you have to do is get a different sheet of paper, uh, rework the problem, get the thing correct this time, turn it back in, and you can get that extra point, turn your 99 into 100. So it's one of the fairest things ever. Now, daily checks and tests are not going to be quite as, as lenient. Okay, I value you knowing the material that you're supposed to know when you're supposed to know it. So if I give you a quiz or give you a test and you don't perform well on it, well, that's not good. Okay. If you want to study up now that you figured out what you missed and all that kind of stuff, I'll give you a different quiz, I'll give you a different test, and you can try it again. Okay. Now on the uh, quizzes and the tests, 
you can get half of your credit back. So basically it turns into a bit of an average. Let's say you get an 80 on a quiz and you don't like it. And you come in and say, Mr. Hill, I want to take that quiz again. I say, okie dokie, I give you a new quiz. You take the quiz again. This time you get an 80. I'm going to take that 60 and that 80 that you got, I'm going to average them and you get a 70. Okay, so you got uh, half of the credit back for the things that you now got right rather than what you did get right the first time. So that's the way the quizzes and tests are going to work. Absences. If you miss class for any reason, you'll be held accountable for the material that you missed. You can find everything you need on Edmodo. Uh, if you are absent and no new material was covered while you were gone, you will be expected to take any exams or quizzes that may be given on the day you return, just like the rest of class. Folks, that's not anything uh, new or difficult. That's basically saying, hey, we didn't cover anything that you know on that day that you missed or this quiz is about the stuff from two days ago when you were here so yeah I want you to you you're expected to take that you shouldn't get extra time for something that you didn't really miss in the first place um, when you're absent for any reason uh, the work that was due on the day that you missed will be due immediately when you return to class Okay, so if you get homework on Monday, which is due on Tuesday, but you're absent Tuesday, when you walk through the door on Wednesday, it is due. Turn it in. Um, the material that you missed on the day you were absent will be due in the same number of days that you missed plus one. Uh, that's pretty much the campus policy. Uh, I believe maybe the district policy as well. But anyway, on campus, uh, however many days you miss, you get one additional day to get things done. So if you miss two days, you'll get two plus one days to get it done. That's three to get things full credit. If you miss five days, then you get five plus one, six, to get, your, uh, get it in on time for full credit. Late work. Work is automatically considered to be late if it is simply not turned in on time. If you turn in work within one class day from the time it is due, you will receive only 75% of the original credit. If you turn it in within two class days from the time it is due, you will receive only 50% of the original credit. If you turn it in past two days, then no credit is going to be given to you for that assignment. And don't test me on that. I'm going to hold to it. Basically, guys, if I give you an assignment on Monday, it is due on Tuesday. If you do not have it on Tuesday, but you turn it in before Wednesday, then I'm going to grade it, and you're only going to get 75% of your grade. If you turn it in on Thursday, I'm going to grade it, and you're only going to get 50% of your grade. If you turn it in on Friday, I'm going to grade it, correct it, give it back to you, but I'm not going to change the grade from a zero in the grade book. I know a lot of teachers don't do that, and they'll give you almost infinite amount of time to get things done. Well, the problem with math, guys, is when I give you something on Monday, I don't need you to know it two weeks from Monday. I need you to know it on Monday because chances are we're going to be doing something on Tuesday. You're going to need those skills that we just went over. So we cannot afford to wait. We cannot afford to have uh, assignments pile up on us and not uh, staying up with the class. So we are going to stay on time. Tardies, if you are tardy, go to Corral 2 and get your printed slip before attempting to enter the classroom. But guys, basically the deal is when you know, I'm going to be out in the hallway, I'm going to close the door. Okay, The bell's going to ring. I'm going to close the door. If you're on the wrong side of the closed door, don't knock on it. Don't come in. Don't say, can I set my books down? Okay, I'm sorry. It may be inconvenient for you to carry your stuff back to the corral and go get your tardy slip. But if you didn't want to do that, you shouldn't have been tardy. Okay, So let's be in class on time. Like I said, we have a lot to cover throughout the year, so we can't, we don't have that time to waste, and you can't afford to be out of class not hearing what's going on in class. Star student slips. Students will get one star student slip to start the year, and then throughout the year, students can earn more for various things that we do in class. These can be redeemed for trips to the restroom and points on assignments or other privileges. It's the responsibility of the student to keep track of these passes if they're lost, then the privileges that go along with them are lost as well. Guys, these are just kind of a little reward, a little incentive program. Uh, we're going to do, you know, do certain things. I basically keep these things in my pocket. And, uh, you know, when something goes, when we're going along, if you answer a question in class, get something right, demonstrate that you have some knowledge or something like that, uh, I'll hand out slips at my discretion. And you just, you hold on to these things. Okay, there's a little schedule over there on the wall. Uh, tells you, you know, kind of what you can redeem them for. Points on homeworks, quizzes, tests, averages, bathroom, you need to charge your cell phone, whatever. They're kind of little, uh, little privilege passes. So hang on to them. They're pretty neat. Discipline. I'm sure we're not going to have any discipline problems because you and I are getting to know each other right now. You're going to know exactly what I expect from you. And as long as you don't try to cross any lines, we'll be fine. But here you go. Okay, when behavior inappropriate to a productive classroom occurs, the following schedule will be followed. 
the first time we have a problem, you and I are going to talk. I'm going to call you up. We're going to sit there and go, hey, here's what you did. Here's what I expect. If you can fix it on your own, then you and I won't have any other problems. But if you continue to demonstrate that you cannot handle this, I will turn up the volume until you hear me a little bit better. Second time we have a problem, I'm going to assign you to 30 minutes worth of tutorial time with me, and that happens either before school or after school. Basically, the message here is, if you're going to disrespect my time in class, then I'm going to disrespect your time outside of class. Okay, You do what needs to be done from bell to bell, and I won't mess with you outside of those bells. If we continue to have a problem, we have a third incident. I'm probably going to call mom and dad. Actually, I'm probably going to have you call mom and dad. So we're going to we're going to chit chat about uh, what's going on, uh, what we've already tried to do, what the problems have already been, and we're going to see if maybe mom and dad can't figure out a way to help you discover how it is you're supposed to act. And then if we continue to have problems beyond that, well, I'll start to get some assistant principals involved and things like that, and and maybe they can't figure out a way to uh, to get your attention a little bit better. Uh, anyway, moving on. Okay, electronic devices, dress code, and attendance. Guys, as far as I'm concerned, this stuff is non-negotiable. My boss basically says, hey, here is the way we do it at OHS. And I say, sir, yes, sir. And that is simply the way we're going to go. Okay, electronic devices, dress code, attendance will be strictly enforced in and around this classroom as required by the district and campus policies without exception. I know you're going to have teachers that do not care if you have your cell phone out and are constantly texting on it. I know that you don't have, you're going to have teachers that do not care if your mini skirt barely covers your hiney. But folks, my boss tells me that we're not going to have that and we're not going to do that. And the problem is if an administrator walks in and they see you doing these things in my class, Room, then I have to answer for it. And I like you. We're going to be good friends, but I don't shouldn't have to get in trouble for you. Okay. So if you don't know what the dress code is, it is outlined in the student handbook. I suggest you read it because I'm going to enforce it. Okay. Piercings, length of, of shorts, okay, how low your top can be cut. Okay, things like that. Make sure you are fully versed. And guys, they do not take the dress code or the electronic device things, they don't take them lightly. Okay, it is spelled out in the codes, and if you cannot follow it, then they're going to punish you immediately. Dress code is not that you're not going to go down there, and they're going to say, okay, well, do better next time. Go back to class. They're not going to do that. They're going to put you in ISS until somebody can bring you a proper change of clothes, since you obviously don't know how to dress yourself, or you'll just sit in ISS for the remainder of the day, and, uh, and, th and that'll be that. On the cell phones, basically, guys, the rule, the rule is this. I see it, you lose it. If I hear it, you lose it. If you refuse to hand it over when you're told, well, now you got two problems. Okay, I'm going to turn you over to administration. They're going to get your phone anyway, and you're going to be in trouble for not following a direct instruction from a teacher. Okay, so let's just leave the cell phones away. They're not supposed to be on silent. They're not supposed to be on vibrate. They're not supposed to be on at all. You're allowed to have it. It is supposed to be off, and it is not supposed to be seen. Uh, extra credit, outside of the incentives for no zeros and one zero and then the star student slips that I talked to you about, I don't offer extra credit typically. Okay, If higher grades are your goal, if you want a better average than the one you have, then what I need is I need you to pay attention to credit on a regular basis, your regular credit, taking notes, doing homework, studying so in case you have a quiz you'll do well, being prepared for tests. You take care of those things, which are the important things, and your grades will be fine. My thing with the extra credit is, is it's typically people that do not do anything for a month, and then they realize at the very last minute, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail. What can I do for extra credit? Now, take care of the, the entire six weeks. That's why they call it a six-week grading period, because it's not just two days long at the end of the six weeks. It is a full six weeks long. Do well for a six weeks, and you'll be good to go. Feel free to ask any questions regarding these policies and procedures. It's better to ask and be sure than to guess and be wrong. If we can grasp these exception expectations, then that will be a good start to a great year. Thank you in advance for your understanding and cooperation on these items. Again, any questions, anytime, you've got my email address. Okay, send me an email, even if it's a question on your homework or something like that. Send me an email. I'll probably get it and probably be able to respond, and uh, maybe that'll get you unstuck so you can uh, finish up your assignment.